show your support, like, share and subscribe. Hello, I am That British Guy and welcome to another booking video. Usually what I do in these videos is kind of group a couple of wrestlers together and plan out a big storyline kind of going forward for a few weeks and months with a payoff at the end of it. Now the one time I kind of deviated from this before I ended up booking the entire Evolution pay-per-view and what I wanted to do in this video was divert from that norm again and focus specifically on trying to resurrect the stature and the status of the United States Championship. Now over on Raw the Intercontinental Championship is the second tier belt and obviously with the Universal title not being around a lot because of Brock Lesnar it has kind of found itself being elevated quite a lot in terms of being the focus in a lot of high profile main storylines. But even before it was taken over to Raw, when it was on Smackdown when the brand split first happened, it still had a fairly prominent place within the company. And the United States Championship, for whatever reason, just hasn't really ever felt like it's on par with the IC belt. When it was first reintroduced during the last brand split, it was kind of held on that same level. And just over the years, it's kind of diminished in terms of its relevance and importance. And it needs a bit of a shot in the arm. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take the booking up until the end of the Royal Rumble. So Shinsuke Nakamura has just won the US title back off of Rusev in the pre-show. Now after that obviously our truth won the belt and I can't, no offence to him, I can't really see that reinvigorating the belt. And the past week it wasn't even featured again and this has been quite a problem over the past few months. It's just not featured enough. 2018 it just sort of ghosted and disappeared for months and months on end. So Shinsuke Nakamura has just won the belt from Rusev at the Royal Rumble. And on the Smackdown episode straight after the Royal Rumble, one of the McMahons... Probably not Shane because he's involved in his own storyline on Smackdown. Kind of rehypes this new era and puts a lot of focus on the US title with that in terms of new challenges and new contenders for it. And basically says that at the end of the show they will crown a new number one contender. And that person will win the main event match which is a six pack challenge. Now, on the new front, what is important to note is anybody who has held that belt since the brand split, so people like Rusev or Jeff Hardy, the likes of those guys, are not eligible to be included in this six-pack challenge. So the six guys fighting out for that title match at Elimination Chamber against Shinsuke Nakamura are Mustafa Ali, Samoa Joe, Rey Mysterio... Andrade, R-Truth and Shelton Benjamin as the sixth person. Now obviously Ali and Samoa Joe have got a bit of an issue with each other. Ray and Andrade have as well. R-Truth gets put into this match because of what happened at the Royal Rumble and the fact that he lost out on being in the match. And Shelton Benjamin, obviously he's not been on TV much. And they kind of hype up his appearance in the Royal Rumble and use that as an excuse to get him involved in this match. So anyway, long story short, Mustafa Ali wins the number one contendership match for the United States title. Now I know in real life he's going to be in the Elimination Chamber for the WWE title, which is obviously a much higher profile match for him. But being honest... What is the likelihood of him really doing overly successful in that match? He will probably get a couple of good spots, may even get to eliminate somebody, but ultimately he's probably not going to be in that final two or three guys for the belt. However, with the United States Championship, there is real legitimacy in the fact that he could actually win that. He's only been on SmackDown for a couple of months. 
and this could just kind of rocket him right up to the top. Now, the following week, Ali and Rusev have a match against Nakamura and Shelton Benjamin. Rusev kind of wants to get a measure of revenge over Nakamura. He didn't turn heel, needlessly. And Ali actually pinned Shelton Benjamin last week. So Benjamin wants to try and get that win back again, getting him back on TV after many, many months off. And Ali manages to win for his team, picking up the win over Shelton Benjamin. Now, as they're kind of celebrating and leaving, Rusev and Lana have kind of disappeared. Nakamura and Benjamin kind of take it upon themselves to beat a bit of respect back into Ali, thus kind of getting a bit of heat back for those guys. And then the week after that, the go-home show before Elimination Chamber, Shelton Benjamin and Ali have one final match off just to kind of end this mini feud. And it kind of goes back and forth just to kind of build Shelton Benjamin back up again. We don't want to completely bury him. But obviously we've got to keep Ali looking strong ahead of the pay-per-view. And at a point towards the end of the match, Nakamura interferes and the match is thrown out because he specifically targets Ali. And Benjamin just kind of leaves him to it and lets Nakamura beat down on Ali. So we go into Elimination Chamber, Shinsuke Nakamura, the United States Champion, faces Mustafa Ali, not on the pre-show, it must be added as well, and they have a fairly lengthy match, sort of 10-15 minutes, and towards the end, Mustafa Ali hits the 054 on Shinsuke Nakamura, and looks like he's going to pin him, but he's kind of inexperienced compared with Nakamura, shows here and Nakamura is able because he's quite tall and quite like leggy he's able to reach out and force the rope break and that's basically the only thing that saves him here he then hits two Kinshasa's one after another on Mustafa Ali in order to put him out and trying to make him look as strong as possible in defeat now, we need another number one contender for Fastlane, because again, this belt needs to be defended on the pay-per-view. So, we have a couple of number one contendership matches. First off, Big E defeats Almas, and the following week, Samoa Joe defeats Rey Mysterio. So, those two will face each other on the go-home show before Fastlane to decide the number one contender. And Nakamura, again, like he did in the match between Ali and Shelton Benjamin just before Elimination Chamber, interferes, attacks both guys, and the match is thrown out, thinking that without a number one contender, he can basically have the pay-per-view off. And again, a random McMahon comes down and basically says, Nope! I think you know where we're going here. No, you're going to be facing both these guys in a triple threat. You will still be defending that belt. So at fast lane, we have Shinsuke Nakamura defending his United States title against Samoa Joe and Big E. Now, for reasons that will become clear afterwards, we need a, a, some kind of a unclear finish with this but obviously with a triple threat match we can't get count outs things like that so what happens is at some point Samoa Joe and Shinsuke Nakamura both kind of lay out Big E so he is outside the ring and is not a factor anymore and right at the end Samoa Joe gets Nakamura in the Kikina clutch but his shoulders are pinned to the mat and as the referee counts the three for the pinfall, Nakamura taps out at exactly the same time. So there is a lot of confusion. Samoa Joe thinks he's won by submission. Shinsuke Nakamura thinks he's retained because of the pinfall. Another couple of referees, perhaps even a Road Dog or a Finlay or even a McMahon come down. And they're kind of all discussing with each other what's going on, who's won the belt. Samoa Joe and Shinsuke Nakamura are kind of eyeing each other up and both ready to kind of tear each other apart to take the belt. Now what this does is it builds things going forward towards WrestleMania, but it also shows that both of these guys, not only do they really want the win, but they want the decisive win so that they can be the champion thus making the championship belt seem very, very important. 
and basically what is decided is that it's kind of a draw finish between the two of them and because of that Shinsuke Nakamura is still the United States champion. Samoa Joe kind of accepts this in the way only Samoa Joe can and lays out a few referees and officials before he exits. So, on the SmackDown Live episode after Fastlane, it is announced that the main event will be Samoa Joe versus Shinsuke Nakamura to kind of definitively find out who the United States Champion is. Now, Big E, who obviously wasn't involved in the finish, kind of takes umbrage with this because, well, he was in the match and there were a couple of times when he nearly did win and thinks that, really, the rematch should be a triple threat. And it is decided that instead um, of having the United States title rematch as the main event that week, Big E will be able to win his way into that match for the following week, as long as Kofi and Xavier Woods are able to beat Samoa Joe and Shinsuke Nakamura in a tag match, and that instead will be the main event of the show. It is also made clear that Big E must stay out the back if Kofi and Xavier Woods cannot kind of win on their own, then he doesn't get a spot in the match. But obviously it's in the interest of Samoa Joe and Shinsuke Nakamura to make this a one-on-one -on -one affair so they both want to win as well to make it easier for them going forward next week in a one-on-one -on -one match. And basically there is miscommunication between those two. They just cannot gel as a team. And Kofi and Xavier, because they are a team and are stable and have been multiple tag team champions, can work as a tag team and they get the win for Big E. So the following week, we do get the triple threat rematch for the United States title, Big E, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Samoa Joe. And we get another kind of not proper finish here as well. Again, to create the fact that all three of these guys really want to win this match because they really want to be United States champion. And... I'm not entirely sure how this would work logistically, but basically at the end of the match they all end up kind of in a pile and they're all kind of covering each other with an arm or a leg or something, a body part. There's some kind of big, whether it's a double team move that puts everybody out or one big kind of splash that somebody does on the other two guys and they all fall in a manner where say Samoa Joe is covering Shinsuke Nakamura, Shinsuke Nakamura is covering Big E and Big E is covering Samoa Joe. So technically they all win and they all lose at the same time. And again, like last time, we get sort of this big argument between all three of them, all kind of trying to argue their point of being the legitimate United States champion. So the following week, another McMahon, again, probably not Shane, comes out and basically strips the United States championship from Shinsuke Nakamura. The belt will be vacated because of that match and because of the match at Fastlane it needs a match to find a proper decisive winner. So the belt until Wrestlemania will be vacated and it will be fought for at Wrestlemania sort of in a definitive style to crown the undisputed United States champion and kind of put to bed all of this controversy. Now the plan going forward as well was to be able to find another number one contender to face the champion for the belt at Wrestlemania 35. So what they have later on in the night is a battle royal to find essentially a fourth man to enter this match because the three guys that were involved are still going to be in that title match at Wrestlemania because it hasn't been definitive but they still want to introduce the number one contender that they would have had anyway, so there is a battle royal. And the winner of this, depending on whether he's healthy or not, because the rumours are that he might be coming back fairly soon, and if he is, that person will be Ty Dillinger, but if he's still not available, then we will be putting our truth in that match as the winner of the battle royal. And on the Go Home show, that Battle Royal winner, whether it be R-Truth or Ty Dillinger, will be facing off against somebody, 
say maybe an Eric Young from Sanity, something like that. And just as he is about to win, Nakamura and Joe kind of beat down both of them and specifically target the Battle Royal winner, Truth or Dillinger, whoever it be. And Big E comes out and kind of makes a save and creates a level playing field and every, there's kind of a lot of tension and everyone sort of backs away from everybody else. So, at WrestleMania 35, we have a fatal four-way match. Big E... R-Truth or Ty Dillinger, Samoa Joe, Shinsuke Nakamura for the United States Championship. And this match will be a ladder match so that we can definitively decide who the winner is. And not only that, whichever McMahon it was, again probably not Triple H or Shane because likelihood is they're going to be involved in matches so Vince kind of makes the most sense here. They walk out a brand newly designed title belt for this match. They have had a complete overhaul of the United States title, a belt that they've had for well over a decade and a half now I think. Um, it certainly feels about that long. They give it a complete revamp and hang it on the hook and it gets lifted up into the rafters ready to be won. And the winner of that match is Big E. And on the SmackDown Live after WrestleMania, with the new belt in tow, Big E comes out with Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods, and they proclaim that like when they held the tag team belts, it's not Big E that is the United States Champion, it is actually the New Day as a collective that is the United States Champion. They essentially freebird this singles title between the three of them. And what they do between the three of them, they defend this belt on Smackdown Live or on pay-per-view shows up until SummerSlam. And they drop the belt at SummerSlam to whoever is kind of over with the crowd and on that kind of level by that point. Whether that be somebody already on one of the rosters or whether that be an NXT call up at that point it kind of depends on crowd reaction and, and how they've built themselves up. Now there are another couple of rules and bits and pieces that I've written down to kind of add to this. So firstly obviously there is a superstar shake up so if that means that the New Day head over to Raw with the belt then by all means they can move over to Raw and do the same sort of thing over there on Raw. They might even get more chance to do that as it is a bigger show and there will be a bigger roster over there with more contenders to face them. Also the belt kind of gets a rub from being on what is perceived as the A show so that again builds up the prestige for the belt. Another important thing is to either feature the champion or champions of the New Day or the challenger, whoever is being set up to be the number one contender for the belt, at least one or other of them in a segment or ideally a match every single week. Keep the focus on this belt on a weekly basis and again that's probably a lot easier to do on Raw. Even if it is just a backstage interview or something like that but ideally a match which features either the challenger or the champion just to keep it involved in storylines and involved on TV. If there are weeks where they haven't decided who the number one contender is the commentary team need to be kind of putting over each guy's wins and losses and whether that kind of leads to a future championship match. So the next time say Andrade beats somebody could he be the guy to next face the New Day or if we're over on Raw would it be somebody like Apollo Crews say or Bobby Lashley if he's not the IC champion anyone kind of in that mid-tier bracket if they're winning or if they're lo on a bit of a losing streak put that over and say that they're further away from this title now because of it make the wins and losses actually mean something and mean that they're working towards wanting to win that belt. Now because we've got three champions here essentially we can have very very different matches against very different challengers depending on who's going to be 
uh, defending the belt. So use that as a platform to get over as many guys as possible. And because it is the New Day, they will add a lot of kind of credibility to their challenges. Whether they be a face or a heel, they're the kind of guys that could kind of have that good match that uh, incites a reaction from the crowd, whether that is a face or a heel character, whether it's somebody that isn't maybe featured on TV as much, they can still kind of get the crowd into it and make these guys look good in defeat. Another thing as well is to try and avoid, where possible, having this belt defended on a pre-show or just having it not feature at a pay-per-view. It needs to get as much exposure as possible. And again, with the New Day defending it, hopefully it will definitely get weekly TV time and hopefully it will at least feature on a pay-per-view and ideally not in the pre-show slot. And lastly, as I've kind of touched on already, because you've got those three different champions, have as many different types of matches as possible and throw in as many different sort of stipulations as you can as well and types of challenger just to keep it as fresh as you possibly can. Then hopefully by SummerSlam this is a belt that people want to be kind of climbing up the rankings to win. It is a belt that uh, the New Day have essentially given their seal of approval to because they are one of the most over acts in the company. It also keeps them away from the tag team scene so that can kind of freshen that up as well. And once we've had the kind of new redesign we can kind of almost reset the belt because it's the oldest design they've got in the company and it really needs a bit of a rebranding and a refocus. And hopefully with all those things by SummerSlam it will be seen on at least on par with the IC belt. If not trying to kind of bring itself as more important than that belt which will then only kind of throw focus back on the IC belt as they try and become more important than each other rather than just letting it disappear onto the pre-show never to be seen otherwise it will kind of be seen like the cruiserweight title unfortunately. So there we go, that was my idea for kind of resurrecting the United States title. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and if there is anything you would like me to book either like this or in terms of a traditional storyline, please also let me know in the comments or you can also leave me a message on Twitter or on Facebook. Until next time, I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.